The Foff Performance 5.2 Soy Machine is an excellent choice if you're doing free motion quilting. Number one, because the space is so big, it comes with the straight stitch throat plate, which I've already put on, and the machine recognized, so I'm, I can't pick any stitch that will accidentally break my needle, so that's good. And when we want to go to the free motion mode, there is the free motion icon, so I'm going to go ahead and select it, and then I have to choose. Now with this machine comes a regular, they, they call it a darning foot, so it actually just snaps on, this is the foot, has kind of a little up part to it that will sit in front of the metal ankle when you actually go to clip it on. And once it's on, here we go. When you go into this, you also hear a little click and that was the feed dogs lowering. So you don't even have to do that. They lower for you automatically. Now, if you're really getting into free motion quilting, I would recommend the Dynamic Spring Foot 3D for free motion. Uh, that one's really the one that's going to be able to um, stitch the best when you're working on battings and different layers and give you the most accurate stitches. Uh, there is also the spring foot free motion. So either one of those will work, but the first one's the recommended one. But if you're using what came with this machine, we do need to select the sensormatic free motion. So whichever one you're actually picking. So if I went ahead and checked off one of those two first optional feet that you can get from your local FOF store, that would be where you would go. For today, we're going to use the sensormatic one. And I'm going to notice that there's the little arrow pointing into the lower right corner so I can touch and hold. Now, I've actually played with this already to kind of determine what the right setting is for my thickness of fabric and batting. So when it, you get here, it will say minus five, and that's how firm it's sitting on the fabric, which was actually too much. It actually didn't let me move it at all. So I'm gonna, I came up to minus three, and that was actually about right. So when I go ahead and start to stitch, um, you're going to just go ahead and see if that's the right setting for your thickness of project. And you'll see that as you stitch, your foot kind of just comes up and hovers. And that's actually what this is meant to do. It's not really meant to go bouncing up or down or anything. That's what those other feet are for. But for right now, the foot that comes with this will actually get you started nicely. But definitely put that uh, straight stitch throw plate on, that'll make a difference. And I have some um, fun variegated thread in here. So let's just go ahead and see, are the tensions looking good? I currently have pink in my bobbin and I am not seeing any pink on the top. When I flip this over, I am seeing more of my colorful thread coming down here and even here where I kind of turn this sharp corner, I'm seeing something that's kind of pulling. So when I have this look, and I can even feel if I run my fingers across this, I can hear little tick, 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 tick. And that's definitely showing that I have unbalanced tension. So traditionally when you are free motion quilting, you probably are gonna need to take your tension tighter. So I want my top thread to be pulled up and that bobbin thread to be pulled tighter against the my fabric. So let's just do a little stitching over here. I'll do a little fun pattern to see where we're at here. All right. And of course, anytime you're doing free motion, it does take practice. I would recommend some hands-on classes or even some craftsy classes are awesome. Um, but I'm seeing less of my colorful thread. I can see a little bit is okay, but I feel like I could go up a little bit tighter. Let's go all the way to 6.0, and then we'll make sure that we're not bringing any of that bobbin thread up to the top of our machines as we're going. Now, a little trick on quilting or free motion quilting is you can set your speed to be a little bit more reduced, and then that way you can almost have a little bit of a cruise control feature when you're stitching. All right, let's see how this one is. Oh, that's much, much better. I would be happy with that result. A little thread is coming to the backside. That's no problem, but I'm still not getting any major pink on the top, even though it's pink <laughs> in that area of the decorative thread. But yes, I feel like I have mastered the settings for that particular stitch. Now, when you're done free motion quilting, all you have to do is touch the free motion uh, tool off. 
Yes, and uncheck a box. There was a click that was the feed dogs activating back. And then when I go ahead and start sewing, then I they'll be up and moving my fabric like normal. So if you ever accidentally turn that on, that's <laughs> that's why things aren't moving. It's because the feed dogs are actually down. So give free motion quilting a try. This is a great machine to learn on, but give yourself time to practice. That is really the name of the game for getting to be good at this technique.